Hello interwebs, welcome back to the Horrors That Is Kerbal Space Program. Um, we are here for another mission, but before that, let's spend some science. Um, so I earned a whopping 233 odd science last mission. Um, and today I want some very specific parts. Uh, so I'm looking for this tristactor coupler, because I've got something in mind with that. Um, also down here we have uh, batteries and some more science and that is very much a must um, and then going along from here I'm going to just kind of jump ahead a tier and go I want that photovoltaic panel please alright awesome um, now with those in mind I've got a whopping 65 points left to spend now I can't get any of these, these are all 90's so aeroplane parts which I'm not doing very much of or more fuel. More fuel! Oh yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, mission today is off to this little rock out here. I'm gonna go see what we can see at Minmus. Okay, so we'll jump into the uh, VAB and we'll do something that I don't do very often. We'll start with something that's not a pod because I want to do this. I planning to send all three of my Kerbinauts, wait, last episode we decided they're not Kerbinauts, but we've sent all three of my spacefaring folk out to Minmus because there are three, I believe three separate sites for doing science in Minmus. You've got on surface, in low orbit and up in high orbit. Um, and I, I think we can, we can safely send uh, one pod to each place. We'll send Bob to the high, Bill to the uh, to the low, and we'll, we'll we'll get Jeb to go in for the actual landing, as he is the poster boy who needs to be the face for all the PR. So uh, we've got all the science on board, and now we're just dealing with a little bit of um, electricity and return mechanisms, because obviously if we're going to send all this stuff out, we need to bring it back. Uh, I changed my mind on putting some more parachutes on there, but now that I look at it, I might might just change change that a bit put some more parachutes on it um we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens before my launch i put landing legs on uh, all the pods because despite the fact that only one of them one out of the three intends to touch down you you never know what's going to happen in space not to mention all the balancing issues that would arise if i put like three tons of weight on one pod and not the others um, this is why I balance the science with the parachute, you'll notice there on the, the bottom science module there. Uh, they both happen to weigh exactly the same. I know there's slight drag issues with the parachute, but I, I, I think they're negligible enough. Um, this is why I also threw this light on the back, because that balances out the photovoltaics and the batteries that I put on the front. Um, and also gives me some sort of handy la landing lights to uh, work with. So we now move on to the stage. Oh, well, no, I'm building the uh, the, the lifting stage first by the looks of it. Um, uh, obviously, this has got to get us up into orbit and uh, ideally quite a, quite a high orbit. Um, try, trying to get to Minmus is a little bit harder than getting to the moon. Though the return journey is by far a lot easier, obviously with the uh, less gravitational pull to get us back to Minmus. And also, um, you're much farther, further out at your apoapsis, so moving your peri... Perihelion? Periapsis? I don't know, moving that down more was uh, a, a lot easier. Um, so we're, we're now down to the uh, the outer stage, if you will, and I have a, a lot of troubles thinking about where to put it so it doesn't horribly spin out. Um, I end up just trying to line up all the bottoms so at least the, uh, the ship can sit on its uh, engines without blowing any particular one of them up. Uh, at this point I'm like, aha, I forgot my interplanetary stage, so we quickly throw one of these on. Um, and I'm still I'm in an ahhing about whether I've put enough enough thrust on this to get it to get it up. Uh, as it turned out I hadn't and on the next section you'll see I tweaked with it just, just a little bit to get it higher up. And then I start working on my staging, which I always seem to make an absolute pig's ear of. Um, by the time it comes to actually like real takeoff, it's all fine. But like sitting on the pad, I end up staring at my staging, going, I "I've messed this up yet again. I, I changed it in the in the, the, the VAB, and I still got it wrong." Uh, so now I'm doing some weight saving calculations. I'm thinking maybe the what I was going to send up was a little bit too heavy for the lifter that I put upon it, to the point where I even include some solid bo solid boosters. To be fair, I should have put these solid boosters on anyway. 
Uh, and, and yeah, generally looking all right here. Um, get all my staging lined up, make sure that all my decouplings happen at the correct time. Uh, and there's a lot of that to be honest. And there we go, one final look over, a bit of a, a, a renaming, it's the Minmus Trio. Um, mainly because I was so out of inspiration after doing this that I ju just named it that and w was uh, happy with it. So there we go, one spin round, we've got all three pods ready to go on top of this uh, quite beefy but not extravagantly beefy lifter. Um, and then a bit of uh, support structures just to make sure it doesn't shake itself apart on the way out to orbit. Oh, and of course, doesn't do that weird spinny thing that happens occasionally. So, getting onto the pad, you'll see that I have made some changes. Um, most notable is the solid boosters up top, um, because basically I just didn't give enough from at this lower section here. So, taking off with my usual impression of a firework majestically arcing in the sky towards its final and explosive demise as a fiery ball of explosion up high, uh, we get up towards my first stage where the Sepatrons kick in and push those things out of the way. I was quite proud of that, that, that worked quite well. I was expecting to like knock out engines on the way down and all sorts. But yeah, this one went well, as did the second solid booster stages being left. Uh, now my uh, tripron trident, yes, because this is a trident. I should have called it the trident. Oh, well, there we go. Well, the, the science trident is raising up into the sky, um, and we're just basically starting to lean over, get, get that, that gravi gravity turn on the go, possibly twice as high as we should have been doing that if the, uh, all the, the, the tips on the internet are to be believed. But hey, I'm well known for doing things differently, so I'm going to do this differently as well just broken about a kilometre a second as we come arcing along up towards orbit. Uh, a quick check of my map reveals that my apple apsis is indeed up to about 100 kilometres which is roughly where I like to hit my circularization orbit. I'm not sure why, uh, it's just kind of a, a, a tradition I've started. Tradition? Yeah, tradition? Yeah, it's a tradition I've started. Um, now we uh, turn my rocket towards my manoeuvre node and then hopefully we should be able to time warp up just like this uh, and pass these very few boring seconds up until the point. For some reason I decided that uh, I was going to fire my engines a good sort of 20-30 seconds early and this has led me to uh, a few issues as will we'll be demonstrated on my map shortly. Though it did mean that this next stage that I'm about to shed with a spectacular explosion will indeed fall back to Kerbin. Um, so now we uh, go to map view and I'm just going to time warp through up until my apple apsis just so I can make sure that I'm in the efficient point of burning and I'm not just pushing myself up higher despite only wanting to circularize. Uh, click on my periapsis so we can have a look at where we are and boom, circularized, wonderful. <laughs> exactly where I want to be actually with um, enough fuel to do what I want to do. So we'll have a quick look, look around on the map and uh, try and find out where Minmus is located. Of course it is more than half a circle away from where I started looking because it's just the way I work it seems. I always go the wrong way around the circle. We got our two points now it's time to start messing around with the manoeuvre node to uh, get myself a good, good close encounter. Uh, in fact I do so much messing around with the manoeuvre node that we're going to uh, have a small little skip on from this point. About four minutes of game time until we come to this point. Um, uh, uh, I really don't know why it took me so long to find this nice little uh, encounter here, but even still, I mess around with it a bit more and try and get closer until I'm like, leave it, Steve. Minutes and minutes have gone by. Let's do something else. There we go. <laughs> right, so now we've got to uh, swing my ship around to find the maneuver node. You know the standard operations here. Uh, find the maneuver node warp round in our or orbit until we uh, are in the appropriate position um, and as always I am spinning in the wrong direction. This is quite a, a, a large ship to be spinning around with just the uh, the torque from the pods but you know we haven't got any SAS at the moment, any um, not SAS what's the word I'm looking for RCS and that's not a word that's an acronym but there we go. <laughs> 
So everything all set up well, I uh, start thrusting as hard as I can with this long, long thin piece of equipment I've brought up into orbit with myself. Uh, until eventually we find out that this is too big, it's just too big and we need to uh, jettison some away, mainly because I've run out of fuel. And we start using a slightly smaller thruster to uh, push on up to Minmus. Uh, I believe in fact it is so small that I have to do a, a, a double burn, um, as, as will be demonstrated soon. We're, we're just going to burn here for the next, ooh, long time. Um, There's the only problem with these tiny engines here. I mean, they are ridiculously fuel efficient compared to all the other engines, but, oh, it takes so long. Um, in fact, you can see Bill is absolutely just spazzing out about how long this is taking. He's like, we're going to miss our flight. We're, we're just going to miss our orbital insertion here. And I'm like, yes, yes, we are. So we'll just spin around the orbit once more like that we'll mess up everything that is uh, on the maneuver nodes and we'll just start thrusting now this to me looks a little bit suspicious i'm like mm. so we'll, we'll reset the, the maneuver node and we'll look for that little encounter there and if my training comes into play we should hopefully be able to get close to minmus well i might i say my training jeb and bill's training comes into play so we're facing the right direction and it's about time to start the second thrust any time now about there that looks good yeah um in fact that didn't look good that looked a little bit late i'm not sure why i started thrusting there but hey that's where we're at it's what we're dealing with um if anything kerbal space program has told me that space flight isn't quite as precise as it needs to be you can uh, just bodge it a bit if you've got the right crew on board so we carry on burning through our last few seconds of at least the delta V that the maneuver node says we need to spend. I hit the wrong button and then check my map. Um, and it turns out that the little bit of bodging there actually set me up on a better encounter than the uh, maneuver node that if, if I'd followed the maneuver node precisely would have. So uh, yay, go bodging. Uh, I spent a little bit of time trying to set up a maneuver node telling me when I need to start um, decelerating around Minmus and spend some time watching planets fade off into the background. Bye bye Kerbin, we'll be back soon. Uh, and then searching the sky for Minmus starts. Um, so I get a quick look on my map, to get the relative positions of everything. And then I'm like, right, well there's Kerbin. That's the, the way away from Kerbin. So Minmus must be over that way. And there it is, I spotted it. Now normally I have a great deal of trouble spotting my targets before I'm like right on top of them but today no we saw it coming from a mile off well hundreds of thousands of miles I should suppose <laughs> missing a planet by a mile that's quite a mistake <laughs> but anyway yeah so we, we go and watch in the uh, in the map view because I still can't quite tell when I reach the sphere of influence of Minmus and Pum. Now, I have two options here. I could start my deceleration burn at periapsis, putting me the closest that I could possibly be to Minmus for the top of my orbit. But I'm like, no, no, I want a highly eccentric orbit so we can leave Bill at one bit of the orbit, Bob at another bit of the orbit, and Jeb goes down to land. Um, so I start burning straight away. Or I could start mucking around with maneuver nodes that are completely useless. In fact, I spend a long time mucking around with these maneuver nodes when I'm actually, like you can see right now, I am burning. I don't know why I'm playing with these maneuver nodes. To be honest, I think I'm a little bit bored at this point and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to muck around with these these levers here, see what they do. <laughs> uh, now I know it's a very, um, very uh, interesting thing. If you watch this yellow line, look at that, just from the different points that you leave your sphere of influence. Um, I'm not sure how I could possibly use that to my advantage. I mean, I know it's basically just a gravity assist, but we could do a little bit better than that, I'm sure. And there we go. My periapsis is now, now down at 26,000 kilometers and I'm up at 2,000 kilometers up here. So now that everyone's in position, it's start to, uh, time to start breaking off ships. Um, off Bill go, uh, sorry, Bob goes. Uh, we're sticking him in quite a high orbit around Minmus because, uh, well, I wanted him in a high orbit. Now I'm having trouble here. I'm like, well, what's going on here? Why isn't my engine firing? So I activate it on the right click. And before I know what's going on, boom, I'm, I'm, I'm being shot out of Minmus's orbit. I'm like, oh, uh, remember that fact. That will come back to haunt me next episode. Wasted fuel. But anyway, so I circularize my orbit around here. And we uh, confirm that we are indeed in a high orbit by first checking the materials bay. Um, I, 
stabilize my orbit facing north, and there we go. Um, high radiation environment, blah de blah blah, 100 points of science, thank you very much. Uh, and then in the, the goo can canister, always feeling right at home up in space. After a failed attempt to uh, switch my focus, I remember that we actually haven't got ourselves an EVA report, so we send Bob out to go float around in the dark void that is nothing of space. Um, obviously keeping an eye on all the rocks around. I was trying to see if we could get a good view of uh, Bob's face and the, and the rock and uh, the ship, but that didn't go well. So we just took an EVA report and gently drifted ourselves back into the pod. Awesome. Then we needed to uh, come out and swap our focus so we can go and deal with the other two. Uh, at this point I'm like, you know what, this, this engine is quite, quite, a, quite a lot of fuel left in it. Perhaps we should uh, take it down to the low point of our orbit and try and use it there. I know we're unbalanced, but maybe with the, the, the thrust vectoring and all the torque that comes from the pod, we could possibly, just possibly, keep it under control as we boost down towards whatever the game classifies as a low orbit. Uh, at this point I have no idea what a low orbit is. I thought 32 kilometers was going to do it, but as it turns out, it really wasn't. Um, but enough of that, we're pointed towards our maneuver node and there is less than a minute on the clock. Um, I, I start to um, increase my throttle just a bit, constantly uh, tapping on the keys to find out how hard I can push the engine and still be able to point it in the right direction despite being quite unbalanced towards one edge of my ship obviously missing the extra pod and it turns out I could do quite well at least well enough for being in orbit around Minmus so we identify which one Bill's ship is and we pop that off using the decouplers and we then check that our orbit is circularized and look at the materials bay and at this point it's like still high over orbit no 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 let, let, let's bring this down a bit more uh, so indeed pointing retrograde firing my engines Figuring out that my staging's not working for some reason still, but uh, whatever, we can right-click and activate it manually. And I bring myself down to somewhere about 10 kilometers. I'm looking to not go any lower than that because I know Minmus has like five kilometer high mountains and things happen and I don't want to smash into the side of a mountain, basically. That, that wouldn't be um, conductive to science at all. Conducive was the word I was looking for there, but uh, conductive will do. And after a small corrective burn, after a uh, small mis mis throttling of my throttle, yes, mis throttling, you heard me, uh, we uh, will uh, point my ship in the right direction, or rather the wrong direction for this point, and we will go round Minmus and um, find the other side. Um, one thing that I've noticed I have a, a, a lot of trouble with here is looking at targets almost every time, no matter like which direction I start looking, it's always in the other direction. Like, I'll start looking down and it will actually be up. Um, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, you know, it's just something weird that happens. All right, so we come out of time acceleration and Bill steals himself down ready for to, to get this burn on the go and we just have a little bit of a thrust and boom! circularized at about 10 kilometers up. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit sketchy at this height because those mountains do look pretty damn close, but we'll go for it. Uh, the uh, material study goes well, that was like 100 points right there, and the uh, goo observation also goes incredibly well, that's 40 points. Uh, we get Bill out and we have a little bit of a, a, a fly around. Um, Try and, try and get Kerbal in the view as well, Kerbin, sorry, in the view as well. There's Kerbin and the Mun, and he's making his observations. I can see Kerbin, the Mun, and Minmus. Um, yeah. And then we just uh, have a, a small little glide back, pop him in there, and we're like, yeah, done. So we now switch to Jeb's ship and start mucking around with maneuver nodes for this one because we want to put down on the planet's surface. Better than that we want to put down on the planet's surface in light because as I described last episode I don't like landing in darkness it's awkward it's difficult you have no idea where your shadow is and you just kind of into the floor um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do about not doing that um, I use my main engine again um, it turns out that these pods don't unbalance it all that much so I was just like well if I keep my throttle below the main thrust levels I can just kind of down towards uh, the, the surface, which works well. Um, I then get down to my uh, uh, minute maneuvering section, the, the, you know, the fine control bit where I'm like, right, I'll, I'll just use this thing now. 
Um, and then I realised that I'm headed for the dark side. And I'm like, no, no, no. Let, let's let's pump out some uh, some fuel and get ourselves going down a bit further. But at this point, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it because we are running quite severely out of time on this episode. Um, if you'd like to find out what happens next time, please do join me. I'm sure I'll put an annotation on the end of this episode. And I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me for this half an adventure. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye!